All right. Well, life got in the way. And we were supposed to play Star Trek Adventures yesterday. Didn't happen. My fault, as is usual in the game groups that I'm in. My schedule is just too volatile. So I uh, was able, however, to have a good chat with two of, of the three crew. And we, we talked about uh, ideas about the ship. We talked about ideas about the their characters and and how they they see some of the uh, the initial hooks or connections between them. But mostly we talked about Star Trek in general and each other in general. A little uh, opportunity to get to know you. So that was that was pretty nice. It would have been great if all of us could have been present. But if all of us could have been present, we would have been playing. So. Um, I'm torn right now about uh, how I feel about not playing because I had such a good time in in the chat. So uh, our session zero was kind of short, and a lot of the things that we talked about, and a lot of the get to know you stuff, and and discussion of aesthetics, the discussion of social issues, the discussions of, of characters and how characters are viewed, uh, both in the series and uh, that we are creating uh, this kind of stuff, was really valuable and would have fit right into a session zero. So it was kind of like a, an extended or extension of, of that first initial uh, you know, sharing of ideas to see what it is that we really want to do. So yeah, it was definitely well worth happening. But it means I have to wait another week, right? So next Wednesday, uh, to run the pilot. I am going to couple this video with the previous video. So this one I'm, I'm just going to keep short, but just as, as a, an update and uh, as a, a tracking of how things happened. One thing that I'm pretty excited about is that everybody who's playing went out and and purchased the PDF. Um, so by the time we, we got to uh, session zero, everyone had at least read through the quick start and some had begun digging into the text itself. This is not one of those core books where there's like secret information. There is, you know, specific advice to the game master about how to run Star Trek Adventures as Star Trek Adventures. But it's beneficial for the people who are not the Game Master in that group to read that too, so they understand what it is that the Game Master is doing, what the, let's say, that the, the language or the, the medium of this particular role-playing game and, and how it talks about and thinks about scenes and scene traits and character traits and you know things like the values and determination that help shape a character idea. If the players understand all of this, then they can lean into it. And they know when it's time to say, you know what, I, I don't want to accept this value complication right now. I, I think it's it's more my character to to do this other thing or um, you know, whatever it is. They understand uh, how to approach or or feel about an extended task and and what to do with the with the work and the and the effects that they're generating and they understand if they want to escalate um, threat in a scene to to bring photon torpedoes into play instead of sticking with with phasers or or taking an even more defensive posture, uh, so that each time these things happen, we don't have to stop play and discuss. Now I know that this is going to happen anyway so that I can be sure that we're all understanding what we've pulled out of here the same way. And if I make a, a hard decision like, no, not this time, or I want you to use uh, this attribute and, and this discipline combination, people understand why I'm doing it and, uh, and we can find the right tone and the, and the, the right interaction. The, the group doesn't know itself yet, and uh, I've only played with one of the players before, but not this game, and not digitally face-to-face. -face. 
So there are things in the game that I'm curious how they're going to go, uh, such as the, the rank and command structure. And I'm curious how interested uh, the players will be about reputation and promotion for their characters. I'm going to be using the, the new reputation system that was released in on the Klingon core book. Because uh, one thing I found about the original version was that even being very conservative about dealing with reputation, it had a, a tendency to climb really quickly. And this puts a lot of pressure on, not so much the players, but it puts pressure on the characters. It's like, if there's nowhere they can go, even though they have these successes, even if they have this, this burgeoning reputation, which might lead to promotion or a higher position somewhere, but not on the ship they're on, this creates kind of a dramatic push for them to leave the show and go to some other service where they can be promoted. And we can see this in the Star Trek films. Um, you know, Sulu's wanted his own command and finally gets the Excelsior and, and this sort of stuff. But uh, is this something that you want in an open-ended campaign? So anyway, I'm curious about how the new system works, so I'll, I'm going to be implementing it. So fingers crossed that I like it more. I guess that's, you know, because there, is, there isn't any play and I still have to wait another week, that's, that's really all that can be said. So until we play, this will be the last of these reflections to be recorded, I think. So in closing, I like the characters. They are they're shaping up pretty nicely. And there's a lot of, of interesting tensions and dynamics going on in the crew. I think, uh, I think the interesting NPC that I'm going to put in that is there to not cause friction in the crew, not to cause problems for the crew, but to generate questions and debate and reflection, analysis, in other words, to generate threat, uh, is going to be the assistant chief of medicine, right? So our commanding officer, if things are going to go the way that it looks like they're, they're going to go, is going to be pulled out of the chief medical officer seat and placed in command by circumstances that hopefully will come up as interesting for play in the series. And so uh, this, this officer who I'm not going to be completely sure. I've got two different characters created. I have uh, a human and I have an Andorian. And I'll have to be guided by instinct and luck, which one I'm, I'm going to, to put in there. But uh, the chief med medical officer will be in there as a source of of interaction, my my way to interact with the players as their characters, as a character that calls certain things into question. Uh, Starfleet orders, uh, Starfleet directives. Um, you know, if, if a if a character is uh, especially one in command. Uh, of a situation like on a way team or whatever is, is calling for something crazy. Uh, we can have one of those uh, Bones and, and Kirk moments of, about, I'm going to relieve you of command, you know, that kind of stuff. So who knows? Uh, so I don't know if I'll go for, for the human or if I'll go for the Andorian. Uh, one of the things that is of interest to the play group is the friction in the Federation crew. Uh, we know that on the Enterprise, there's Spock, and there really aren't any other uh, alien species aboard. So we want something similar. We want an era of Starfleet where the ships are manned by the cultures that build them and contribute them to the Federation fleet. So there's Andorian ships, and there's Tellarite ships, and, and so on and so forth. But there are individuals 
who you know live abroad and there are exchange programs and, and things like this. So there will be tensions may be too strong a world. There'll be something about having a Vulcan commanding officer and an all human crew. What will it be like to put an Endorian chief medical officer in there? I don't know. We'll see. Stay tuned. Take care.